Please welcome back the great Dick Gregory, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Boy, um, explain to them the significance of sitting on this couch over the years and how it began with you. You mean sitting on this couch by myself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened is the Jack Parr show, you youngsters don't know nothing about it. The Tonight Show probably... has always had a different host. It's Leno and Fallon. Back in the day, it was Steve Allen, Jack Parr. And, and Jack Parr was probably one of the most powerful folks in the history of TV. He couldn't make it now, because the rhythm had changed. But once you went on the Jack Parr show, uh, I thought you had it made. And at that, at that time, a black comedian could not work white nightclubs. And don't think white folks is dumb now. You can sing and you could dance, but you couldn't stand flat-footed and talk. Hmm? Oh, because wow. then they would know something. And don't think these white folk down south is dumb, OK? Because them rednecks down there said 100 years ago, you got the right to vote, they'll be in the White House. Was they right? <laughs> Was they right? <laughs> now, listen, I want you to say you black folks to hear this. Every night I watched Jack Parr. For five years, when the great Billy Eckstein was sitting at a bar and told me <clears throat> that Jack Parr wanted, but he won't work it, and then he cussed him, and I almost hit him. That's how much I was in love with Jack Parr. And I said, why? He said, because the Negroes never sit down on the couch, and that just didn't wipe me out about him. It wiped me out. I've been looking at it for five years and didn't see it. Hmm? Huh? did not see it. And so I, I was embarrassed to tell my wife. And all at once, I get a call from the Jack Paul show. And my wife was so happy, and I go to the phone, and I, I said, I don't want to work a uh, uh, Jack Paul show because the Negroes never sit on the couch. And I hung up, and I started crying. And I'm explaining it to my wife, and the phone ring again. It's Jack Paul. <laughs> and so, in, in being fair, he might have got hooked like me. I didn't know they wasn't sitting there. He might have not known. That's what racism and all that viciousness do. It makes you blind to all kind of things. Huh? And so, consequently, he came on, and I told him, he said, well, come on in. I'll let you sit down. And I went in, and I sit down. Hear this. When I'm talking about my children and this and that, I had letters, about a thousand, come from white folks and say, I didn't know black children and white children were the same. Hmm? So many phone calls came in the NBC that night. The circuits blew out in New York. My salary jumped from $750 a week, working seven days a week, to $25,000 in the next two months, a night. Because he let you come and cross over and sit down. Yep. Wow. Sit down. It was powerful. It was powerful. I didn't know that. And I didn't know, I didn't take the odds of, will this help or hurt my career? I'm making $5 a night. I ain't got no damn career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, when you see, see, and as a father of 10 black children, mm. You don't have to listen. Children don't hear what you mean, they hear what you say. Huh? When you black folk tell a black child you got to be twice as smart as a white person, you telling them they dumb. They don't hear what you mean. Look at us, huh? Mentally, mentally. Do you know how many of you black folks out there will take your children to Disneyland to see a rat? but have never carried him to King's grave or his tomb, and had he not died, you wouldn't be welcome there? Mm. Mr. Gregory, you hear me? Uh, when you say King, it reminds me. 
You know what? You're one of the only people I know who's gotten also a call from John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Yeah, he, he, he called me, but no, no. I've always had calls from white folks, but it was about a bill. <laughs> no, it was about a bill I owe. <laughs> And that's the one thing, the biggest problem, I've been mad 55 years, the only problem I had with my wife, she couldn't handle debt. She said, when we going to pay Sears and Roebuck? Maybe we haven't got no money. And when we get some money, Sears and Roebuck is not my first priority. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't believe big time white folks is dumb. I believe Sears and Roebuck knew I wasn't going to pay when I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, I walk in the house, she said, quick, quick, uh, Sears and Roebuck, a letter, final notice. I read the letter, final notice. <laughs> Thank God we won't be hearing from them no more. <laughs> I, I gotta ask you this very, very quickly. You, gosh, I, I met you when I was 19. Here you are today still kicking knowledge. What drives you, sir? My bills. Mm. <laughs> that don't mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that don't mean I'm a Pam. <laughs> but I need two of you white folks in the audience to hang around after, because I'm going to open up a black airline. Uh, I mean, I look at this mess over there in Malaysia. That's why I blame that on white folks. No, you go to an airport, it's 98% white folks. Now, you got a problem with Greyhound, bring it to me, baby. <laughs> you hear me? Greyhound have never lost a bus. <laughs> <laughs> and then they did this stupid thing the other day, that little young black child, that stowaway on the, on the plane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, this government, you know, I do some research and I find out he checked his luggage <laughs> and then got under the wheel. And you know, boy, got to be dumb, he on his way to Africa and end up in Hawaii. <laughs> and so, my airline is going to be different. It's going to be named the black airline, Topeka Air. <laughs> Tamika's cousin. <laughs> and our advertising is going to be, <clears throat> we leaves late, <laughs> but we gets you there on time. You can catch Dick at the New Living Expo in San Francisco Saturday, April 26th. Spoken word from Daniel Beatty next. This is Dick Gregory.